Well, here we are. We're in Module 2 now. And in Module 2, we're going to talk about data types and values and variables and different names associated with the things that we're going to use in our Python programming. Now, let's start out with data and what data is and some of the common analogies or comparisons that I'll use. Now, in programming, we're going to have values that either we've already predetermined or somebody or something provides to us. And then those values, we can use them however we want to use them. And those values come in different form. Now, a common analogy that I will use and one that I'm going to use extensively in this module is a storage unit. Now, many of you have storage units, whether it's a closet or it's something that some place that you rent in a storage facility. In either case, you're limited by certain rules that apply to that space on what you can store there. Now, let's say your closet in your home. Can you store radioactive material in that closet in your home? Well, physically it may be something that could be done, but then again, there's, there's issues that would arise. Um, can you store water in there without having some kind of other storage device? be it a bucket or some kind of container. Could you store 500 gallons of water just in the closet? And the odds are, no, you can't because it's not designed for that. So the places that we store these things or these values that we acquire have to, in a way, adhere to certain rules or guidelines when it comes to storing them. Um, I, I'm not going to store, um, I don't know, a, a flock of geese in a storage unit down the street. It's, it's not going to work out well. And I don't think they're going to want me storing 10, 15 geese in a storage unit. So with that said, we're going to understand that there are rules that we have to play by when it comes to data and different forms of data we'll call different types of data. Now, one type of data could involve text or words, characters. Another type of data could involve numbers. Are numbers and text the same? Well, they can be. The number one can be used in a sentence. Can I multiply a sentence by three? No. So there's different rules that come into play when we're talking about the types of data. And the different types of data, those rules are all spelled out or set in the data types. Now the data types are what we'll call classes. And if I create an instance of that class or clone it, make a copy of it, that, and we'll talk about it later, is an object. Now, for the purposes of this module, let's say that I ask you, please enter your age so I can divide your age by two. If I ask you to enter your age so I can divide it by two and you type in TW, E-N, 
20. Well, yes. The word 20 is great to describe your age. But I can't divide that by 2. So I have to be a little more explicit when asking the user to give me this input. Because it has to be in a certain form to, for me to be able to do what I need to do with it. Now, if I give them an example displaying the number 20, 2 followed by a 0, that number can be stored in more than one data type depending on what I want to do with it. And we're going to talk about the different data types a little bit now and in more detail in future modules and, and videos. And so I've got the book, the digital text that I've got available to you. Um, you had were provided access to it in the first module. And it's in the resources. Now they talk about we're storing this information, but it's not really information, it's data. We're storing it in memory. Now, for the context that we're dealing with here, let's just assume we're storing it to our hard drive somewhere in the memory of the computer. So I'm storing this in memory somewhere, and think of that like some external storage facility that you store it 10 blocks down the road. Now, if I'm storing it in memory, I need to know the rules associated with it. And if we go back to that example, somebody entering their age, an age can be stored. We've got a, a, a number of different data types that we have available to us. I scroll down the different types. We've got a Boolean, integer, floating point, complex, text string, a list, a tuple, a byte, a byte array, a set, frozen set, and a dictionary. Now we can see here where we talk in depth about each one of these data types in modules later in the course. Now we'll talk about Boolean, integer, and floating point in more depth in the next module. Now Boolean is something that we deal with quite often. It's, it really breaks down into a zero or a one, true or false, if we want to put labels on it or an example of it but it's either one thing or the other. And the most common is true or false. You say yes or no. There's another way to look at it. And let's scroll back up here. And if we're going to store these things in memory, I need to know how much space am I going to have to am I going to have to reserve in memory because different data types have different amounts of space available to them. That's what I was talking about, those rules when it came to the data types. And not just the different types of space or the amount of space we're, we're putting in there, but there's more rules to it. Um, is it something that I'm going to allow somebody to change? All right. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. If something's static or if it's fixed, if it's constant or if it's variable, meaning it can be changed. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But at this point, let's just focus on the fact that there are different types of data 
the Boolean is the true or the false. In Python, we have a couple of different types of numbers that we deal with. Uh, integer is a whole number and a floating point is a decimal number. We've also got the ability to store something in what's called a complex data type. That's much later in the course. And something that what we see up here in this paragraph is text. It's static text. It doesn't change. Every time I pull this page up, that paragraph looks the exact same. Now, we have the ability in programming to store text that may be changed over time. If we think about it as uh, we would store our name, first name, middle name, and last name. Those are three different values being stored. Uh, do the names change? Well, they can. We have the ability to go in through the court system and change our name. So that is something that could be variable. And in our program, we can have what we'll call a list. Think about your grocery list. It's not limited to words, but in the example provided here, it can be a list. We've got, and we'll talk about it later, a tuple, a byte, a byte array, set, frozen set, and a dictionary. So at this point, let's focus on the things that we're going to deal with in the short term. Numbers and words. Numbers, integers and floating points, and words are text strings. Okay. So a string is a sequence of characters. The number one, is that a character? Yes, it can be. So if I had the number one followed by the word 20, that can be a string. Can I perform mathematical calculations on it? No. So strings are just sequences of characters. If you enter in data into the system. If you input keystrokes, so you type in the number two followed by the number zero and you hit enter. The system captures those keystrokes. Those keystrokes are acquired as characters. So our inputs by default come in as a string. And something that I may have to do within my code is convert those keystrokes, the number two and the number zero, to a different data type. I want to treat that as not text or a text string or a string. I want to treat it as an integer. This is something we'll talk about in the next module, and it's what we call type casting. We're going to modify or take that data and convert it into a different data type. So we've got to be familiar with what form the data is in, where it came from, what we're going to do with it. That way we know what type it needs to be in. And we're storing our data in some location. As I said, we're going to store it, preferably, on this hard drive, a local hard drive, and it's kind of, like I said, we'll treat it as a storage unit. We need to know the size, the type, there's a number of different things relative to that data. Okay. And the example they use, they talk about shelves. We have memory shelves, 
that we can store these things on. Now, a data has a type. There's a value. It has a unique ID to set it apart from other things. Think about it like a nickname of sorts. And then there's a reference count. We're not going to dig that deep into this aspect, but that keeps track of how often this thing is used or somebody's gone in to access it. And we'll talk later about uh, the security associated with the data. Who do we want to have access to it? And do we want them to be able to change it? We'll, we'll compare that to giving somebody the key to our storage locker. If they've got the key, they can do whatever they want to with it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and stop this video at this point, and I'll pick back up in Lecture 2-2.